Good morning, grade 12s. I'm going to be doing Taylor Swift with you, or the poem Taylor Swift, yeah, written by Kubis Grobler. So just a bit of background information. Kubis Grobler is a daughter, Libet. That's also the person that he wrote the poem for. Um, she was 12 when Taylor Swift's song, The Best Day, came out. And she immediately identified with the lyrics. She loved it. At that stage in her life, she went through a difficult time where she didn't really have friends at school. Um, and same thing in the song. So in the song, Taylor Swift wrote about not having friends at school. But then when she got home, her mom used to put her in the car and they would go for shopping or a drive or whatever. The poem, the difference in the poem is that Libet is not with her mom. It's the good relationship with her dad um, that she identifies with. So because his daughter identified with this, the song so much, he decided to write a poem about it. So let's go. The Taylor Swift, Dear Kubus Grobler, Fer. The Kubus Grobler is ons dichter. Taylor Swift is die titel en Fer Libet is die subtitel. Libet is sy dochter en hy dra die gedig op aan haar. So he wrote this poem for her. Jy herhaal. It's personal. He's talking to her. Hy praat met die meisie. Talking to this girl. En dit maak dit meer persoonlik. So it makes this poem more personal. If he's talking to someone directly instead of talking in general. Haar woorde. Van melancholie. So melancholie, melancholie betekent dat is hartseer, of dat betekent iets wat hartseer is, en ook verlange. So sadness and longing at the same time. Vir die hoeveelste keer? So vir die hoeveelste keer means, you know, over and over again. And then you'll see verse 1. Is net drie versreels en ons noem dit een tersine. Weer. Weer is your whole second verse. It's just one word. So weer is alleen plaasing. Alleen plaasing means it's the word is on its own in a line in vir beklemtoning to emphasize the word. So again. You listen to the song again and again and again. And then line 1 to 4, Jy herhaal haar woorde van melancholie vir die hoeveelste keer weer. Dit is wat die meisie doen. So that is what she is doing in line 1 to 4. En nou, na heel dag lang, so now is now. As I say, I come from the school. Af, so she, as soon as she arrives home from school, this is what happens. No. So in now, no, all day long, she periodes school wer in pauses alien. So that's what a whole day consists of at school. Periodes school work, so lessons of school work. Poses, breaks, and then alien alone. So in class she's alone, and break time she's alone. So again, alien, it's alien plossing, it's written alone, for beklemtoning, to emphasize how alone she is. So drawl in the leaky, all she does the whole day is listen to the the words of the song in her mind. She goes over and over. Her enigste geselskap is die woorde van die liekie. So her only company, enigste geselskap means only company, is the words of the song. So her dag bestaan uit schoolwerk en eensame pauses, sy het nie vriende nie. So those first um, five lines of the second verse shows us what her day consists of. Schoolwork in pauses, so doing schoolwork and breaks, 
in een sommer poses, it's lonely. She has no one to talk to. Sy het nie vriende nie. Val jy met school uniform, taai van school. So school uniform is a uniform, and taai means sticky. So it's almost as if school clings to her. You can feel it, she can feel it on her, on her body. So it's uitgeput, completely exhausted by the time she gets home. Skoene uitgeskop op die bed neer, sing jy die woorde van haar nietste CD. So as she gets home, jy val op die bed neer, she falls down on the bed, skoene uitgeskop, just kicks off her shoes, en sing die woorde van haar nietste CD. And again, she starts singing the, so the words to the song. And then needs the CD when he wrote the poem. The Taylor Swift's newest CD at that stage was the best day. So in fooling with modern music, this girl likes modern music. She knows what's modern and she absolutely loves the best day from Taylor Swift. Geloi in MP3. Snuck. So snik means to sob. Again, alleen plaasing vir beklemtoning. So alone in a line for emphasis. And then you'll see how it, it grows from here. Um, escalates. So first she's only sobbing. Dit beteken to sob or is hard seer. En dan noosne kraans huil. So it goes from sobbing to crying. Heil is also a leenplaasing for beklemtoning. So written alone to be emphasized. In heil harder. So where she was just, you know, just um, sad or feeling sad, starting to sob. Now she's crying harder. And then gren. So eventually it goes over. Snuk. And then heil. And then gren. So grens is also a leenplaasing for beklemtoning. Again, it's written, um, written alone for emphasis. Grens beteken jy verloor beheer. So you completely lose control and kan nie ophuil nie. She cannot stop crying. So it goes sobbing, crying more, and then eventually she loses control. So toenemende grade van hartje. It's almost like degrees of comparison of sadness. So she, it becomes worse. The crying becomes more, she loses more control. And then, yay. Also written alone and also for emphasis. Want for the eerste keer. So, want gives us a reason. It says because for the first time. And he, want tells us the werkelijke rede for our ongelukkigheid. So, the true reason why she's upset and why she's crying. For the eerste keer in die spiel met jou pose oor vol trane. In die spiel in the mirror en met jou pose oor vol trane. Your dad's eyes full of tears. So when she says, or when he says, your pa so oor, die pa ervoor die selfde emotie. So she realizes her dad is experiencing the same emotion. He feels the same way she's feeling. And there's a hechte band tussen pa and dochter. A very close relationship between the dad and the daughter. They're very close to each other. Verstaan jy, weet jy. So verstaan jy, you understand, en weet jy, you know. So sy kom to die selfde besef, kennis en inzicht. Coming to the same realization, having the same knowledge and insight. Hoekom bome hulle blare verloor? 
So now suddenly she understands and she knows why trees lose their leaves. So when trees lose their leaves, it's usually autumn. This is a soon fun for honoring a season of change. I'll come back to season of change later on when we do symbolism of the autumn leaves. Um, so let's just talk about the theme quickly. The thema is vergankelijkheid van dinge. So vergankelijkheid means nothing is permanent. Things come and go. So is die kind se kindertijd. So like a child, there's a time for it to end, for you to grow up, stand on your own feet, go on with your life. So this is die vergankelijkheid van dinge. Things change. Nothing stays the same. Tight, stony, stony. Time never stands still. Aspecten van die gedig, soos het vier stroof is, four verses, 25 versreels, 25 lines, geen hoofletters, no capital letters in the poem. Stroof 2 is net een woord. So your second verse is only one word. Die enigste rhyme in die gedig, so the only rhyme we have in this whole poem is keer en weer. So line 3 and line 4. In die tiener meisie, identificeer intens met Taylor Swift. So this teenage girl has an um, intensely identifies with Taylor Swift. Feels like they're the same person and she's experiencing the same situation. And the symbolic van trone, the symbolism of the tears. So your innerlijke hartseer en verlange veroorzaak uiterlijke vertoon. Van so this is quite difficult. It says innerlijke hartseer means internal sadness. In other words, the loneliness that she feels at school, the fact that she has no friends, she has no one to talk to, she feels very alone. Veroorzaak it causes uiterlijke vertoon van hartseer. An external show of sadness. So because she's so sad inside, it causes her to sob and cry and eventually lose control. On the outside. Melancholy is your heart seer. Snuk, heil in grens is your grode van heart the degrees of sadness. Sien universele pain in die spiel. When she looks in the mirror, she not only sees her own eyes, but also her dad's eyes. And in actual fact, this is universele pain, it's universal. So everyone that's going through change has the same sadness or is going through the same. Changes same emotions. School dag is afgebroken. So school day afgebroken means it's put into its little boxes. So you have your specific lessons and break time and time to do registration and so forth. Maar by die huis kan sy vrye deels gee aan die hartse. So it's almost as if school is this very controlled environment. But when she gets home, she can just give free reign to her sadness. So she can afford to, to show her sadness. Where at school she has to control it because it's such a controlled environment. And now this the symbolic van Harvestblore. So we just touched this at the end when we finished up with the, the lines in the poem. So symbolic van Harvestblore, the symbolism of the autumn leaves, there's a teken dat summer verbias. So first thing, it's a sign that summer is over. So in other words, it's a, it's a time that, it's a sign, sorry, that a certain time in her life is over. Aftokeling voor vernieuwing. So aftokeling means to break something down. Voor vernieuwing, before new growth. So you need, a tree needs to lose its old leaves. It needs to break down or lose something. Voor vernieuwing, before. It gets something new before growth, before the new leaves. And then, you must first hard seer ken for geluk. So you need to know sadness before you can know true happiness. So your stemming, it's the, the way the poem feels um, or how you, the feeling it's trying to convey to you as the reader. So stemming is mel melancholies, trierach, hard seer. So it's that, you know, sadness and loneliness, ensom and ongelukkig by die school, and then being sad and lonely at school as well. So it's just the whole 
the whole theme is quite sad, lonely. Um, this girl doesn't really fit in at school, doesn't have anyone to confide in. Die woordkeese, so the choice of words, by lang klanke, there are a lot of long sounds in the poem. Dit vertraag die tempo en beklem toon hartseer. So vertraag die tempo, it slows down the tempo that you read, it makes you read slower, en beklem toon die hartseer, it emphasizes the sadness. So I've, um, took, I've took the words out of the poem for you, so herhaal, woorde, Keer, jyldag, skoolwerk, alleen, draal, taai, school, neer, nietste, gelooi, eerste, verstaan, weet en verloor. Those are all the words with the long sounds in the poem. Uh, dan intertekst. So intertekst is if there's a poem or a story a song, a movie, something that you can relate, that relates to the poem and that you can uh, draw comparisons between. So if in this poem, Taylor Swift, the intertext is the best day, the song that this girl is so obsessed with. So um, there are a few comparisons. In the best day, is die sprekerse vriende is aaklag met haar. So her friends are horrible to her. In die gedig, die spreker het nie vriende, but he's gone. She doesn't have any friends at school. She's lonely at school. Then the best day, she cries when she gets home. And the gedig, heil as sy na teile se liekie luister. So she cries when she listens to the song. In the best day, die meisie se ouwers neem haar weg van die huis af, maar beter te laat voel. So her parents take her away from home to feel better. And then in Taylor Swift, the meisie is steeds alleen, want haar ouders reageer nie op haar hartseer nie. She's still alone, her parents don't um, react to her sadness. The spreker in The Best Day het haar maas het oor. So in the song, she has the mother's eyes. And then in Taylor Swift, the spreker het haar paas het oor. She has her dad's eyes. And then our last comparison, um, in both the best day and in Taylor Swift, verstaan later waarom bome in die herfst hulle blare verloor. They both realize why trees lose their leaves in autumn. And then there are your, um, die bronne lees. So, I hope you guys understood, I hope you like the poem, I think it's quite nice. If you have any questions, please let me know. If you are at school and you're watching this, I'm with you, so you can just put your hand up and I'll answer your questions. And if you are at home watching this, please email me your questions and I'll answer them. And if there's anything new that comes out from our class discussion at school, I will also type it up or record it and load that on Google Classroom as well. Thank you.